I've ever played that is a real-time strategy game. And that's a genre I'm not very familiar with, and I uh, got this game to sort of help me familiarize myself with it, and I want to make this video as a free playthrough before I even play the game, and just sort of express my thoughts without really knowing that much about the game, but then I'll make another one where I have played the game. So like I said, um, I have not played real-time strategy games before, and there's only one I've really played before, before playing this game, and that would be a game that I like a lot, but I suck ass at it, and it's called Oshigami Blue Earth Remix for the Nintendo DS, and then there was the original version for the PlayStation, and it's a cool game but I suck at it, and I would like to get better at this genre, I would like to be able to um, just not suck and just play it and just, you know, understand the mechanics better. And see, with the Hoshigami Remix, you could uh, have your little mercenary team fight alongside you. And there wasn't really much consequence to it, and you could, you know, upgrade your weapons and crap like that. And I know that's a feature in Fire Emblem as well, which I find kind of cool. Um, another thing that I like about Fire Emblem Fates specifically is a story that it's basically about family and how it's two sides, so to speak. It's, you know, the Hoshido and the Nor kingdoms fighting and stuff, and what I find so intriguing, though, is see, um, the Nor kingdom, you know, kidnapped, uh, Krom, or not Krom, damn it, Korin, and, uh, they raise him as one of their own, but that, you know, brings the question, if he had never really known that he was kidnapped as a baby, he wouldn't know any better. He just would have thought that he was nor and that's what i've always found interesting like if the hoshida really did care for him i feel like they would have gone back to the kingdom and try harder to get him back you know um one other thing that i am a little hesitant of for playing the game even though birthright is easier is it's been ma making me avoid fire emblem altogether is the from a death feature because I suck ass at this genre so I know that then I will have so many people die and that kind of sucks because I don't want characters I devote a lot of time to to just go and die you know that'd be disappointing and um I know especially uh, with Fire Emblem at least not so much, much with the other game I mentioned with Fire Emblem the characters are very important, and that's one thing that I really like about the series, even though I haven't played it. And that's one thing that I'm looking forward to, but I'm not sure, like, should I let them die and do the real Fire Emblem way of playing and just let everyone die, or, you know, use the, I think it's called Phoenix Mode, where the characters can come back even after they die. So, you know, it's, um, it's a little... Uh, frustrating. It is, it is a, you know, really big thing to think about that the characters do die for real. That's kind of cool, though. Um, one other thing that I really like about Fire Emblem Fates is, you know, just the fact that you are essentially, um, dealing with two really kind of cool character designs for both sides. Um, I've always liked the Nor design, it has a sort of more dark co color scheme, um, and, you know, kind of contrast with Hoshido being more bright with red, and, uh, um, the Nor being mainly black and white, but then the box art for, um, Conquest is, uh, purple, and then, you know, the box art for Face, or, um, Birthright is red. And, um, I actually wanted to get Conquest first, but that's the, the reason why I got Birthright, because I suck ass at this genre. And, you know, that's why I knew that just ultimately this would be the more logical choice. Start off with Birthright and get used to the mechanics and then move on to Conquest, the one I really wanted. Um, 
I honestly kind of wish they just came bundled together. I think they did do that at one point for Fates, but I don't think they do that anymore. I mean, it was a really expensive one. I think it was like the Revelation bundle, because there was, you know, um, Birthright, Conquest, and you know, you side with each family depending on that one, and then Revelation where you side with neither family and just do whatever. Um, so it's an interesting concept for a game. I really like the story. I feel like this could be like a fantasy movie. Like I feel like this would be a really kick-ass movie concept. I just think it's an awesome concept for a game too. And um, it just, you know, kind of brings up a lot of deep questions like whether or not truth and uh, fiction, you know, what's true and what's false. Are just different perceptions of reality. If you had never known that you were adopted, or you know, if Corman had never, never known that he was not really from Nor, then he wouldn't know any better. He would still feel like he's from the Nor family, and he would believe that to be true because he wouldn't know the information that would prove that to be false. So it's a really deep philosophical uh, concept for our game. You know, what is really truth and what is really false? What is your reality? Because for him, that was his reality. He thought he was Noor, but he didn't know until, you know, he was much, much older that he was from Hoshido. And you'd think that then they would have tried harder to, you know, go get him. I don't know. I'm guessing that's part of the war. But anyway, I just think this is a really kick-ass concept for our game. I'm going to see how much I like it, and I will make more videos about it later and express my opinions on it as I play the game. So I hope you all enjoy and look forward to those videos and i will uh talk to you all later so bye